so we right here at the Tian Ma booth. So hi, so who are you? Uh, Bob Nunhouse. I'm a uh, <laughs> senior FAE manager uh, for TM uh, up in Santa Clara, California. So uh, how soon are we getting these phones with the uh, flexible OLEDs? Well, actually, these are these are all prototype stage. Um, this particular display has a um, has a. Uh, strain sensor actually integrated into the panel and then has um, feedback control to the actual um, content that you're seeing displayed here. This is how we expand the peacock feathers uh, based on strain. So that's definitely going to happen when you get the flexible phone and the whole UI pops up when you flex it open? Well again, just ideas. Uh, ideas on how you may affect um, UI as an example. And uh, right here, there's another flexible. Another flexible display. Uh, this one can go as, as thin as a three millimeter band radius, um, and we can do up to ten thousand bands. And the OLEDs don't get damaged or anything? No. So it's just gonna keep on closing, so you can totally. Like a fold it, put it in a bucket. Yeah, down to a th three millimeter bin. Nice. You see it from the top. That's right. Mm -hmm. So, um, why are so many companies uh, making a notch phones? You have some notch. Yeah. Well, this here? is yeah. This is just an example showing uh, the where the earpiece would normally be. Um, so. There are different variations, which you have, which you'll see coming up, that don't have the notch. This actually has an integrated pressure sensor. You can see here how uh, the pressure indication at the bottom. All right. Complete it again. Replay. Pressure. So it's uh, the the flexible OLED with an integrated force. Yeah, force sensor. Mm -hmm. All right. You have mm -hmm. some uh, some more uh, smartphone displays in that corner. Uh, we can come back to here. Um, you have some a display yes. with a hole. So you asked about the notch, and yeah. uh, as you can see in the graphic in the background, is that the problem with the notch is it it actually intrudes into the actual visual image itself, and a lot of people don't like that. So there is a way to pattern the, um, the OLED display to provide an opening that you see right here. Uh, which would be used for a cam camera module. Nice. Yeah, I think aesthetically a little bit more pleasing. And then uh, another... Uh... So, yeah, very similar, but in this particular case, now we have a cutout for um, fingerprint sensing. So uh, we provide a fingerprint sensor in, the, in this area here um, as a combination of not only uh, display, but sensing. And this is a no-notch. It is, it is. Like a no-notch. Yeah, this one, this one is not all that is actually based on low temperature polysilicon. Uh, 300 nits, a very high contrast ratio at uh, 1600 to 1. And very wide viewing angles as well. And uh, you have those round yeah. displays? Yeah, they're more novel than anything. Um, yeah. But they're in the market, right? Yes, these are actually in the market. Um, it really just demonstrates that we can that we can do uh, round displays. Yes, with all these apps and stuff going on, the kids are learning with this, right? Yes. And uh, let's let's uh, let's walk around over here to some more this smartphones. You have uh, no notch. Yeah, this is no notch. This is full display. The one to your right will be uh, same version, but with the notch again. Uh, shows you the earpiece here. This is AMOLED. Yeah, AMOLED. And another AMOLED. Uh, this is real, full, high definition uh, AMOLED. It's not a simulated resolution. It is actually full HD. And it's it's working. Yes, this touch sensor is integrated. Into it as well. So all the icons are smaller. Mm -hmm. Yeah, due to the resolution. Nice. 1080 by 2160. Nice. Huh? It's just a couple examples of some OLED uh, dis uh, displays that are actually um, being used currently in, in smartphones. Uh, these are five and a half inch uh, displays. Maybe it's out of power. Yeah, it doesn't look like it's powering, does it? Yeah. Nope, not powering. Um, this, this display is actually quite interesting. Um, so some of the challenges with OLED is uh, temperature sensitivity. 
this particular panel, this 4.2 inch AM OLED, came out of our uh, Japanese uh, prototype line, and it is a um, an attempt to integrate into the automotive area, which requires much higher temperature. So this is a reformulation of uh, OLED to withstand um, the 85C. So right now, this particular display is capable of operating up to 1,000 hours at 85C, 10,000 hours at room temperature. Nice. Mm -hmm. So that, that's uh, some stuff going on with the automotive you're talking about. You yes. have more right yeah, here. More automotive. Yeah. Here. And uh, this is a. So it's just really kind of a technology idea of you know side view mirrors, which is uh, that idea has been around for a while with uh, cameras. And what this shows is what um, cultivated information can be. This is a single laminated. Um, three displays with single lamination. So what we can do from a direct line lamination. Yeah, the touch sensors actually. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and um, some more stuff for the car. Yeah, this is this is uh, this demonstration really shows uh, local area dimming. So they use, <laughs> they use mini LEDs, and uh, this is the actual image, and this is what the backlight is doing itself. So you can see here the lighter area that was the picture of uh, the flower before was light in the air. So this has um, 200. And 40 different individual areas that are independently controlled for luminosity. It analyzes the incoming frame data and then varies the backlight according to luminosity. That just improves the contrast a lot and the blacks are better. Quite quite a bit better, yeah, quite a bit better. And also a little bit of power savings as well. Nice. And it, uh, it, it equals kind of uh, some of the OLED a little bit? Yeah, I mean, obviously the target is to is for alternative technologies to compete with OLED. Um, this is um, this is what we call our freeform display, and it's really used to demonstrate that we can do uh, really any shape. Um, this particular display is a little bit more interesting though because they added a hole in the center where they combine um, a mechanical sweeper for the odometer, I mean for the speedometer. And strong nice. relationship of trust. So, you know, for that, it's uh, what they find is, you know, some people don't like pure digital displays because there's no three dimensional information. So they can actually add a mechanical sweeper in this bigger case. Good afternoon, attendees and exhibitors. Thank you for attending the second day of the 2018. The exhibit floor will be closing in five minutes. Thank you. Another, another OLED. Um, Except um, with a um, not only a touch sensor but haptic feedback, so you're getting a vibration every time you access uh, a function. Is it the whole device is vibrating? Yes. So everywhere the feel can be can be felt. Where was a display like this be used? Um, well. You know, I I don't know. Again, this is prototype, so uh, the application has not really been defined yet. Um, it's really to create ideas, uh, similar to what you're seeing here. This curved display, um, and right below that, you see the wheels themselves are full uh, circular displays. Nice. So you can do all kinds of shapes. Beyond this, this is a uh, privacy filter. Uh, but it's done electronically. So the left-right um, viewing angles are actually decreased depending upon the electrical drive to the privacy filter. And this is an ink-based um, filter, actually. So how do you activate, deactivate? Is it, or is it always... Yeah, actually, so what I can show you here is that with no electrical drive to the, to the um, ink itself, the ink disperses. When it disperses, it creates these black fields that doesn't allow for wide viewing angles. When you apply a DC voltage to that, the ink then moves towards the polarized end, the positive end, um, which opens up the viewing angle. 
And it, it's possible to turn it on and now it's, it's just sticking. It's actually cycling right now. It's going so now right it's there. narrow? So if you stand to the side, you'll see a transition. Now it's narrow, there's no way to see it. Well, you can see it from the side, you have to wait though. It's and then cycling. it comes back to the white. All right. That's right. Maybe we can go. Uh, here, here we get the tactile. Yeah. So this is tactile feedback, and there's there's two modes here. One is an electrostatic sensation, which you can feel as you move across the display. It actually, um, um, you can feel a difference in resistance as you come across that. It's an elect electrostatic sensation. And this is going locally on the display. It is where your finger is at. Yes, yes, it's it's graphics dependent. So you can only feel it during motion over specified areas. And then added to that, we have haptic feedback, which is vibrating the entire panel. So as you press, you're getting haptic feedback. So this is a PCAP sensor that uh, multiplexes both the electrostatic feature plus the haptic feature at the same time. So when I'm scratching, when I do like this, it's only under my finger that the, hap the haptics are happening, not the whole display. That's correct. Only this is the whole display. Yes. So how's it doing that? Well, so this is a PCAP sensor. And in the PCAP sensor, the pattern itself is multiplexed with the electrostatic um, um, sensation that you get as you move. And then after you locate what you, what you want to do, you're pressing down, and that PCAP um, sensing location is activating the piezo driver underneath the display to move this vibration plate. Right. And that's what's causing the, the haptic feedback. Are these in the market yet? This is not. Again, prototype. That's <coughs> a prototype to the SID display rig, right? Yeah. It's the coolest place to come to see the the future of displays. 21.3, um, larger panel. Uh, this is using quantum dot uh, to give very, very high color saturation, as you can see here. Uh, this is 120% of NTSC color standard, so very, very color saturated. This is a quantum dot film-based uh, product. Again, still uh, in prototype. So is it the best LCD in the world? That's what? Best LCD that's possible to do? Uh -huh. um, well, 120% of NTSC, it's extremely high color saturation. So uh, the quantum dot technology is um, you know, uh, very interesting right now. The problem has been is that it uses cadmium. Cadmium's been a hindrance for the Rojas compliance. Uh, but now they have a, what, what we call reduced cadmium. Um, uh, technology, which is Rojas compliant, it meets the it meets the maximum standard. So uh, the compliant of what? Um, yeah, like, uh, Rojas is the reduction of hazardous substances. Ah, so it was hazardous, hazardous, but now you're getting yes. down. Yes, now it's down within acceptable levels. Mm -hmm. So you, you it hazardous in terms of it, there was a leakage, it could be bad. No, in disposal from a worldwide ah, perspective landfill landfill type of landfill. perspective yeah, that's right yeah. 21.3 inch it's high contrast uh, this one is 1100 nits it's 2000 to 1 contrast ratio uh, obvious uses is for medical imaging in that particular case very high resolution 2560 by 2048 and uh, this one's pretty high color for what it is, 70% of NTS. Nice. Yeah. You have some high brightness. What you see on the walls is our, our outdoor viewable products. Um, this is a combination of taking a standard transmissive display, adding a backlight recycling film to push more light through the display as well as a proprietary AR coating on the outside. So most of these, straight out of the box, are 1,600 nits, 800 to 1 contrast ratio. So outdoor view. And what do you have here with the reflective displays? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the reflective okay. displays are kind of making a resurgence. Um, the improvements has been, what you see here is, this is a 14% reflection ratio. 
But um, when you move over to the smaller displays here, they've actually been able to improve the reflection ratio. This is 25 percent of reflection ratio. And it's mm -hmm. So higher reflectivity. This one uh, incorporates both a front light and a very, very high reflection ratio. So there's a front light. Front light is actually used for a crossover or or nighttime. Then, if you, if you go outdoors, yeah, in pure reflection mode, that's ultimate power savings. Um, but at night, you wouldn't have ambient lighting, so you would need to supplement that, and and we do that by creating a front light in this particular case. Yeah. So you have more high brightness. More high here. bright. More high bright. That's right. And we move into, um, we, make, we actually make uh, certain panels for high shock and vibe specifications. This one is what we call a 7G panel, so it can withstand 7 Gs of uh, shock. And it's primarily for this type of application, industrial um, you know, application. There's some more uh, wet yeah, these are uh, projective capacitive displays. Um, this is our second generation displays. Um, intended for uh, wet usage, so what we have here is, this is difficult for um, most displays, is um, when you have water on the surface, we have it tested with salt water, clear water, defib gel, ultrasound gel, and uh, also cavicide, which is a medical disinfectant, which is quite difficult as well. You can do air bonding? We do both, uh, we do both perimeter air bond and uh, direct bond. Get the highest quality? Yes, yes. For out outdoor viewing would be for optical bond as an example. This is, um, um, this is demonstrating um, uh, custom cover glass. We actually have an extended cover glass here with a printed um, uh, printed black matrix. Uh, this is actually an AG etch outer surface. Typically we leave with film solutions like an AG film or, or an AR film. In this particular case we did a glass solution. AG etch. So some customers need that for um, reliability and long-term usage. Um, what you see up here is another um, uh, PCAP control, but this one is is extended field. You see here, I'm ex with some sensor in front. Yes, yes, an extended capacitive field, but it also combines um, regular PCAP touch features as well. So this one is extended field. Right. And uh, on the wall, you have some uh, some other. These are also these, these are also targeted for the medical applications. Um, full high definition, wide format. Uh, both of these panels come in either uh, embedded display port interfaces or LVDS interfaces. This is a 27 inch, it's a 4K by 2K display, so very high resolution. Uh, we laminated a piece of cover glass with a black matrix on it. A lot of people like this look. We can also offer this type of display with a PCAP touch sensor on it as well. Um, this is a new 30 inch, uh, primarily targeted toward radiology. Um, what the radiologist wanted was two uh, x-ray images side by side to do A-B comparison. Uh, the reason why that's important is the way it used to be is a radiologist would have two independent displays. The problem with that is as they age, they shift in color temperature. So doing AB is very difficult, thereby moving the same uh, image on the same display makes them comparable. Nice. And here's a special floating display. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And the, 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 uh, yeah. Something is going in right here. Yes. Yeah, you can see, see exactly where it uh, converges. Yeah. What, what is the floating that's happening right here? Well, yeah, it's based on what we call our horizontal double density pixel structure, which is, in essence, is taking a vertical RGB stripe, uh, coming out, uh, rotating it on the side, splitting it at the sub-pixel level, and adding a lenticular lens on top of that to direct the left eye, right eye. Is it like a holographic display? It's an auto-stereoscopic display. Yeah, it's angled. Angled. All right. So, uh, there's uh, lots of stuff happening with Tianma, and you are... Uh, 
this is your locations? It is, it is. So we're in Shanghai, Chengdu, Wuhan. Uh, these are uh, manufacturing sites as well. Uh, we have office in Japan. Uh, of course, we're in uh, the United States in Santa Clara and in Chino, and another office in Germany as well.